Hey everyone, Jack Keeper here, and in this video we're going to install Linux onto a thumb drive. And this is not going to just be a bootable live version of Linux, this is actually going to be the Linux operating system itself installed on a thumb drive that you can take anywhere and plug into any computer that's 64-bit and capable of booting a thumb drive and you can use your operating system just as you would if it was on your regular hard drive. You can save files to it and everything else and then just take it with you and put it on another computer and pick up where you left off. So it's really cool. It's a nice concept, especially if you like maybe a, have a job somewhere and you're working for some skinflint boss who has a chintzy computer with windows on it and it's full of viruses. So you can put in your own Linux on it, boot it up, and you won't even have to touch the hard drive on the computer that you're working on. So it's kind of a cool thing. First of all, the way we're gonna do this is we wanna use VirtualBox to actually install this onto the thumb drive. And the reason for that is because if you were just to simply create a bootable stick on a smaller drive and then boot your computer to it and then install it to a thumb drive, there's always a possibility that you could hose something. You could maybe accidentally install it to your main hard drive and then ruin all your data, or you could somehow screw up your boot record. So you don't wanna take any chances on all that. So we're gonna use VirtualBox. Typically my VM of choice is Virt Manager. I really like Virt Manager and that's what I pretty much stick with. But in this tutorial, we're gonna use VirtualBox because it's available to a wider range of users, especially like if you're a Windows user or a Mac user, it's a lot easier just to get a hold of VirtualBox and do this. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and download Linux Mint for our demo here, our example. So I'm at the Linux Mint website right now and I got the link to the linuxmint.com website in the description below. So we're gonna just go to our download tab here and we're gonna run down here. And as you can see, there's three different flavors available, cinnamon, mate, and XFCE. I'm gonna go ahead and download the cinnamon ISO. And they even have a torrent available, that's cool. So I'm gonna go with the torrent. I'm gonna download it and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that we got our ISO downloaded, I've gone out to VirtualBox website. And again, I put the link down below in the description. This is virtualbox.org, I believe. And so here at VirtualBox, if you're a Windows user, you'll need to come out here to download the binaries. And probably if you're a Mac user as well, maybe Ubuntu, but typically for Linux users, you don't have to worry about going out to the website. All you gotta do is use your package manager and just install everything you need. And what I recommend installing is VirtualBox itself, the application, plus the extension pack, which is located right here, VirtualBox, at the time of this video, 6.1.18 Oracle VM VirtualBox extension pack. So you wanna be sure to click on this link and get the extension pack as well, because we're gonna to need to recognize our USB drive. Okay, so after you've downloaded VirtualBox, there's a couple things we gotta do. The first thing you should do after installing VirtualBox is to restart your computer. The reason I say that is because if you don't, at least in Linux anyways, usually what happens is you'll get a VBox DRV error. And so that's always not cool when you're, after you create a virtual machine. And so you'll get some error messages typically. But if you just simply restart your machine first, then you should be able to avoid all that. Okay, so now we're in our virtual box. First thing we wanna do is we wanna go up to File and Preferences. And then we wanna select Extensions. And here we wanna verify that our extension pack is installed. Now, since I use the Package Manager in Linux, it is installed automatically. However, if you had to go out to the website and download everything manually and run the install, the extension pack was a separate file. So what you'll need to do is click the little plus button here and navigate out to the folder where you installed, where you downloaded your extension pack and then just add it into here and it will install the ex extension pack automatically for you. Once that is all done, 
then you should be set unless I think unless you're a Linux user. If you're a Linux user, then and I think this only applies to Linux. You know, I just want to be clear on this. In Windows and Mac, uh, there may be a similar situation, but I know for sure in Linux anyway. What we need to do is add ourselves to a user group, the VBox users user group. So I'm going to just do that real quick by bringing up the console. So what we need to do is open our console here and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type sudo gpasswd hyphen a toadwit, which is my user. And then vbox users, which is the group that we're adding to. So now I added the user toadwit to the group vbox users. So now we can verify that we are added to that users by typing groups and then toadwit, which is or in your case, whatever your username is. So it would be groups. And then for me, it would be Toadwit. And now we can verify that we are in the VBox users group. Very good. So all we have to do from here now is just to log out and log back in. And so that will activate everything. So I'm going to close out a virtual box, log out, log back in, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back into virtual box. So now that we got all that out of the way, uh, we should be good to go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a machine. So we're going to go up here and click new. And then we'll just give it a name. We'll just call it Linux Mint since that's what we downloaded. And then it already filled in the type and version for us. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And by the way, this same process will work for any Linux that you decide to install. You know, we're just using Mint as the choice here, but whether you want to use Ubuntu or Arch, Manjaro, Garuda, it's all up to you. I'm going to crank up my memory up to about, uh, I guess four gigs is fine. We'll go ahead and hit next. And then here we want to click do not add a virtual hard disk because we're not going to need a virtual hard disk. We're going to install directly to our USB stick. So let's hit create and then just hit continue. And there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to go in our settings. And firstly, we want to go to display and we want to beef up our video memory here because it's only 16 megs. So I'm just going to crank that up to uh, oh, let's just make it around 64 megs. Make it a little more beefy and then we'll just enable 3d acceleration because this is running cinnamon so that might come in handy now let's go down to our storage make sure and we got to load in our cd image so we'll click that and then we'll click this little disk right here icon and then choose a disk file and i have navigated out to my desktop where i and downloaded the iso I'm going to hit open. And so now we got that loaded into our virtual CD. Next, we want to go down to our USB. And since I'm using a USB 3 device, which I would recommend that we use a USB 3 for this. Otherwise, just leave it at the default 2. Now you want to plug in your USB stick that you're going to install your Linux to. So I've gone ahead and plugged mine in. Now we want to hit this little plus icon here to add a USB filter. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff we can choose from. So I'm gonna select my sand disk, which is my 64 gig U drive. Now that we got that, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we can just go ahead and boot into our machine and have fun. We'll install our OS. And we got our standard first time messages here and failed to attach disk. Mm -hmm. USB. Okay, we'll have to check that out when we get booted in. Okay, got our connection established. I'm going to go ahead real quick and just adjust our resolution here. So I'm going to run down to display. A 
about 1680 by 1050. Okay, that's better. Not as perfect as 1980, but I guess we'll live with that. <laughs> it's just for installing anyway. Okay, so now we're back at our desktop. Let's see what's up with our U drive. Hopefully that came and mounted here. Nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my U drive and then plug it back in. Okay, I'm going to go up under devices here, USB, and I'm going to go ahead and check this box. Okay, I see what happened. I'm back in my machine settings. So what I did was I shut down the OS and went into settings here and then USB. And here's showing my disk is selected, but I have the USB 2.0. So I need to change that to three because I have a USB three stick. So I went ahead and did that, hit okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and restart again and it should work. Okay, so we're back in, yay, that's a lot better. All right, so we have our 64 gig drive here showing up now, that's much better. I'm gonna go ahead and readjust our resolution again because we lost that when I rebooted because this is the live version after all. Ten fifty again. All right, very good. So now that we're back here, we have our sixty-four gig drive. So our USB stick is what we're going to install this onto. Let's go ahead and hit this install, and then continue and continue with English, that's good. Now I'm gonna check this, install multimedia codecs. That's always good because that'll allow you to watch like YouTube videos and stuff like that. So let's hit and continue. Okay, and then we got this unmount petitions that are in use and we don't need to do that. Uh, this is actually just install detecting our ISO file SDA. So we're just going to say no to that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit erase this. And remember, your USB stick, if you have any important data on there, you want to back it up before you actually install to this disk because it's going to erase your disk completely. Just a little reminder in case you have your treasured stuff on there or your long lost tax documents. <laughs> Okay, let's hit install. And we'll go with yes. Okay, and that looks good for our time zone. That's close enough. And for our name, we'll just give it anything like uh, Jack. That's original. And then uh, we'll just say that. <laughs> and then you can have it log in automatically if you don't want to log in every time you start up your Linux, or you can have it require a password, whatever you prefer. So we're going next, and now it's gonna go ahead and do the install, just like it would to a regular hard drive, but now it's installing to our USB stick. So we'll go ahead and do this install, and then we'll see how it comes out. So I'll go ahead and pause this right now, and it shouldn't take too long, and I'll be back right after the install. Okay, we finished our install here. I'm gonna go ahead and just X out of this. And then I'm just gonna shut this down. Now if we go to computer here, click on our disk, and we can see all our files here. So if I were to boot my computer to this, then we will have our Linux. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and since I don't have a video capture box with me. It happened to smoke itself a while back. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Vertman. And so since my video capture had smoked itself a while back here, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this in a virtual sense, but I'm gonna use Vertman instead.
because it's a lot easier to, to launch from a USB stick than in virtual box. But in your case, all you gotta do is unplug your stick or just reboot your computer to your stick and then you're good to go. And you should go right into your new Linux install. But for the sake of demo, I'm gonna go in here to Vert Manager. And this is my test image that I made a while ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and just open my box here. And then I'm gonna go into my settings. And what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm only recording this just for your reference in case uh, you ever wanna know how to do this. If you're a Vertman user, I'm gonna go in here to add hardware and then select the USB host device. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select my SanDisk that we had installed our Linux to. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to my boot set options select my USB device that I just created and just bump that up to the top of the list there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start this machine. And now it's booting up Linux Mint into our virtual machine. So hopefully this install went fine. And there we go, there's our login screen. I'm gonna hit my magic password and we should be into the Linux Mint desktop anytime now. And again, this is booting off of the USB drive that we just created. And there's our screen, nice, excellent. Okay, and there we have our welcome deal here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Yeah, I didn't set up my Vert manager there for the display drivers properly to work with Cinnamon. So that's why I got that message. I'm gonna go in here to our control panel, change our display, 1920 by 1080. So let's go ahead and apply that. There we go, very good. So we're gonna go ahead and keep that configuration. And now we are running Linux off of our USB stick. And so here's our home folder. And as you can see, we got 48 gigs free on our 64 gig drive. Nice. So now we're all ready to go. And just like any new Linux install, we got all our stuff here, our different items, and even an office suite. So you can take this drive anywhere with you and uh, do your stuff. You can check the internet, you can do your work in office, you can do all that great stuff and save your files right on this disk. And there's our web page. So there you have it. You have a Linux desktop installed right onto a thumb drive that you can take and use on any computer any computer that's 64-bit. <laughs> I wanna just remind you of that because this is a 64-bit OS, so if you plug it into a 20-year-old computer that's a, got a 32-bit processor, then hey, it's not gonna work. But any 64-bit computer that can boot a USB drive should be fine. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.